Well, hello, you guys. Thank you for clicking on this video or tapping on this video. It depends on how you're watching it. I don't judge. You do whatever you got to do. Um, it's been requested of me multiple times that I go over how exactly I build a quick mine and uh, how we do this effectively. So what we're going to talk about here tonight, we're in no man's sky. We are at an S-class paraffinium uh, deposit. I'm not going to go over how to find that. Uh, if you need that, let me know. I'll show you exactly how to track down different types of deposits and whatnot. That's not that big of a deal. It's actually pretty easy, but we could go over it if, if that's something that you want. Um, if not, not, no big deal, whatever. We can, <laughs> it's a different topic. That being said, here tonight, what we're going to be looking at is we are going to be looking at how to set up an effective and quick, uh, quick mine. Uh, I have a pretty good way of doing it, at least I think so, and people who have seen me do it have also agreed that it's pretty effective. So, without further ado, we're going to jump right over to it. So, hello, you can see me here. Uh, this is us. I'll bring in a little bit of game sound here. This is us here on this really nice little world. It's got blue grass. I guess some people call it white grass, which is kind of neat. But if you can see, I have found, I have found a real nice hot spot. It's paraffinium. It's S class. Uh, it was a total, total lucky, lucky guess. This wasn't even, wasn't something I sought out. I was just like, I need, a, I need something. What can we do? Paraffinium happened to be the thing that fit the bill. Uh, I've put down a base so that we can build here. And uh, just for the record, I'm going to go in and options and show you guys what we're dealing with difficulty wise. Um, I'm going to make it right now if I don't already have it this way. Crafting is free. So that being said, if you're building a base, uh, you're going to need a lot of metal plates and a bunch of other things. If not, just turn crafting off and you can follow along with exactly how I'm doing this. So one of the things that helps me the most is to, you know, establish where our hotspot is. And I'm basically standing right in the middle of it. Um, when you're putting down mines, uh, the terrain can tend to eat these. So one of the things I like to do is to pop ourselves way up in the air so that we don't have to deal with it. And uh, one of the best things I've found to do that with is this little cylinder option here, which is kind of cool. Um, I like to go into build camera. It gives you a lot more, lot more freedom over what it is that you're looking at. And um, it doesn't matter where your character stands. You can move around and, and manipulate things just a little bit better. So I, I like to go about three high really kind of get ourselves off the ground uh and then what i end up doing is going over and finding the really tiny small timber panel and dropping that right up on top so this is where my first extractor is going to be right here then my second one is off to this side and third one is off here so when we go to build these guys you're going to have an extractor here here and here and what i like about this this uh this setup here is that the extractors fit these uh, these panels almost exactly, and that's really, really, really helpful. Uh, keeps them nice and nice and tidy. Uh, so then what I do is I add another panel. It's just a little spacer. And uh, here, I'm going to come around this side because the tree's in the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make room for my supply depot. So one here and one here. And then what I do is I do four down each side, so eight total. So there's going to be one extractor, uh, one supply depot here, 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 here. And I'm going to fill out this side as well. So there's going to be eight here and three here. Uh, eight supply depots and three extractors. Then I'm going to do a little bit more. We're going to take the bigger, uh, the bigger timber, right? This is where our power plant's going to go. You're going to need something to power your mineral extractors or your gas extractors if it's uh, <clears throat> if you're going for like oxygen. But what I do is I go three down. Okay, so this is the basic footprint for everything that you need to get yourself off the ground. So, first and foremost, it's nighttime right now, so we're not in a hurry to get our, our power plant going. So let's jump over, and we're going to grab our mineral extractor. And this is where I was saying this is really nice, because these guys fit almost exactly right. You can go one, and all you got to do is just kind of line up, line up like the feet. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit tricky because of the, uh, the tree here. There we go. So if, yeah, if you notice, the feet line up almost exactly to where you need them to be. And then what you can do, man, I might need to get that tree out of the way. <laughs> uh, then we're going to take our supply depots. And these guys, they don't really matter which direction they face uh, because 
they're uh they have like connections on all four sides so they're really 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 nice and easy to place the other thing that really helps too is you have that little white dot that you see right there for a split second you can go dead center if you want and you can just place those guys one by one actually i'm going to start up here so i can see where we're going so you can place them one by one i'm going to speed up just a little bit this doesn't have to be exactly perfect it just ends up looking really nice if you constrain them to these uh, to these little timbers. And boom, there we're done. So the basics of the mine are already done. Now, what's really crucial is gonna be uh, actually connecting everything up. And if you give me two seconds, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this. I am, I am over it. I'm going to take this tree down. Hopefully I don't get in trouble with the sentinels because I know they're ever present here. There we go, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it was driving me insane. All right, so we're going to go back to our piping. We're going to go out of... I'm going to zip up here. There we go. Oh, we can see. How nice is that? So then the way this works really well is that you can snake pipe from one to the other. So now all three of these guys are connected. And that means as they extract, they all shoot down this pipe. And then what's cool is you can actually wire these right to the back of each of these two. And if you come around to this side, you can connect them individually, like so. So now these four are connected, and they're connected to this guy here. Then we can take from the front of this guy, like so. And now every single one of these, with that much ease, is all perfectly connected. And it's beautiful. It looks real nice. So, then what we do, is I like to come over to the prefabs, and I do this just because it's actually kind of pretty. I take the glass cuboid. I'm going to tell you why I do it. Don't worry. And I drop that. If you notice, there's a little notch dead center at the top of the cuboid. I'll try to find a way to highlight it for you. That I'm lining up with the dead center of the, uh, the wooden timber here. So I'm going to drop this here. I'm going to drop one next to it immediately and one next to that. This is going to be our power plant. And our power plant is going to consist i've done the math on this for these three to run we need seven seven solar panels so we're going to connect all seven now what's nice about the cuboids as you drop these guys inside they wire up automatically you don't have to wire anything the entire building acts as a hub it's really cool that's why i like doing it this way so we need seven solar panels to five batteries. Just like that. Our, our, entire, our entire setup now is complete. All we have to do is wire our, our power plant to our extractors. And the cool thing is you can take a wire right off the back and connect it right to the side. It's like I thought about this. So you have nice clean lines. You don't have to you don't have to flub anything. You don't have to glitch anything. And then you can take from the front and connect them this way. Look at how beautifully clean. Look at how beautifully clean this is. Now all we got to do is wait for the sun to come up and we're basically good. And then if you're a real if you're a real nutcase like me and you can't stand not having like your your uh your stilts or whatever while we're waiting for the sun, the nice thing is the cuboids the cuboids actually make it so that you can you can connect up directly to them that way. Uh, now, these guys aren't going to work that well over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to, uh, if you're like me and this 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 kind of thing bugs you, uh, you can just manually free place and drop that. It works just as well and looks pretty cool. Now, for, the ro for, for those of us that are like, okay, this is great, but we're going to need a little bit of, we're going to need a little bit more to work with here. Uh, I got you covered. Check this out. So we're going to grab this big, big timber again. And we're going to come up into the sky a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in the floor just a little bit. I know this is going to be kind of kind of awkward for a second, but hang tight. I'm going to tell you why exactly we're doing this. And we're going to fill that in here. So there's a couple other things that we're going to need. And I'm just going to use the smaller guy so that when we get to walking around up here, we don't fall, fall through the floor. Um... As you make these bases, one of the things that I've noticed that's really helpful to do is to drop a nice uh, a nice little teleporter 
on your base so that you can come and go quickly without having to uh without having to really think about what it is you're doing you can literally pour it in grab everything out of the uh out of the depots and then pour it back out to to your next mine or or go back to whatever it was you were doing so i always put the teleporter in this back corner here and then you're gonna need one other thing that's actually pretty important and this is a proximity switch the reason you want this is because without this proximity switch your teleporter will just suck up power so what i like to do is put this right here and basically oh look at this power is coming on right now so i'm going to wire the building to this side of the prox switch and then this side of the prox to the teleporter and as you're going to see when we get up top we're already running you can see the blue lines are showing that we're running we've got enough power we're charging up our batteries let's see generating let's see if we can get a, a beat on the battery real quick there we go see how that number is going up that's a good thing you want to see that that's going up while these guys are running meaning we're overcharging the battery so that they will last overnight and then what's really cool is when i get close to this the prox switch will turn this guy on so we're not burning power all the time it's a very very good scenario this works great now this little setup here will store a grand total of 8750 uh, of whatever it is that you're trying to get your hands on uh this happens to be an s class here which you're gonna see there you go it's an s class we're only sitting at 83 i didn't find exact dead center it's okay uh but overall this is going to be generating just these three 1100 an hour so this will fill up pretty quick the idea behind these with me anyway is that overnight they will fill up and you can come and pick them up once once everything is filled you come and grab this as many times as you want this is also kind of a modular design you can build these up as high as you want and you can build these up as high as you want should you want to increase that you will also need to build these up to match whatever it is that you add so if you add another three of these you're going to want to double your power supply over here the other little quality of life thing that i do uh when it comes to these setups is we're going to need a spot to land our land our ship because on the off chance you land and you want to do something else on the planet and you don't just want to jump back in your your uh <laughs> you don't just want to jump back in uh you know your, your port and go someplace else i always make enough room it takes nine of these guys and then what is it whoops close enough like that to drop this alternative i, I like it because it's smaller the alternative landing pad and i always do it like this so that uh your ship is facing away just like it's just a nice aesthetic i don't know i'm weird i can't get to fit just right yeah that's pretty good right there whatever doesn't have to be perfect um so that's the basic base it works really well you let it go for a little bit oh you know what i can't i can't let it go hold on there's one more thing i gotta do and this is just the uh the kind of almost perfectionist in me i can't tell where the bottom of it is and i can't tell if we're straight or not so i mean it's gonna be a guess it's so low under here i'm gonna put it like as close to center as i can close enough it'll it, it'll be okay we go walking around underneath it's not that big of a deal oh i accidentally hurt myself that sucks uh anyway so that's the basics on how I do this. It works really well for me. Uh, I would recommend it a thousand percent to anybody who is uh, looking to get these set up. As you can tell, it doesn't take that long. We've been we've been recording about 15 minutes. It doesn't take that long to set up. It's quick, it's easy. Uh, each one of these guys over here is gonna require like, I don't know, 10, 10 metal plates each. So that's like 80 here. And each one of these guys, I think is five. So that's like 95 metal plates. Uh, the, the the biggest thing you're going to be looking for with your solar panels is five metal plate uh no i think it's one metal place plate a piece so you need just roughly over a hundred um to get the entire thing off the ground everything else is actually pretty easy to find um i hope that helps uh you'll need some some resources for your pipes uh the wiring is free and if you go this far these guys take a lot these landing pads they do take quite a bit to uh to get working but that being said, I wonder if I have any Navi data. Get my ship to come land in here. Yeah, I do. Cool. 
So that being said, that is how I set up my mines. I think it looks pretty cool. The last thing that I usually end up doing uh, is dropping down back to where the base computer is, making sure it's got a good name on it. Ours does not. So I'm going to name it, you know, the Parafinium. I, I can't. I think it's two F's. Two F's. Two F's. Parafinium mine. I'll just call it Parafinium. Uh, and then what I do is I capture a new base screenshot because, you know, like you got to be proud of your work, right? So we'll go like this. Actually, we'll get so that we can see the entire base. That's pretty good. Nice little tree in the uh, in the foreground. So I'll go like that and then upload. I always like to upload just in case somebody ever enters the system and finds the base and needs whatever's in it. They can go ahead and take it. It refills in like, you know, eight hours. It's not that big of a deal. And the likelihood of me needing to get back to it and need it that badly that quickly is pretty low. Also, the, the likelihood of somebody even finding it's pretty low. So, but if they should need it, they can. They can have it. It's all theirs. It's no big deal. All right. Well, that was interesting and it was kind of fun. I hope, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if this is something that you find helpful, I would love it if you'd give the video a nice little thumbs up. That's super helpful for me. If you're not subbed to the channel, please do that. That's a huge, huge, huge deal for me as well, too. Uh, on top of that, if you'd like to come and talk, talk to me about this, I'm live with No Man's Sky almost every single day at twitch.tv slash dreadcaptainjames around 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and on. Monday through Friday, you can find me. Not on the weekends, sorry. But every other time you can find me there. So I would love to see you over there. Please do drop in. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And of course, continue to be the legends that I know that you are. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.